lectures of this module, we have discussed about two important techniques. One was polymerase chain reaction or PCR and another was the automated DNA sequencing methods. In both these techniques are very important and widely used in different areas of biotechnology. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about another important technique that is enzyme linked immunoservant assay or we can in short call it ELISA. Now, ELISA is a very popular wet lab method which is an analytical method in biochemistry labs and ELISA is a fundamental tool of clinical immunology also. Based on the principle of antigen antibody interaction, this test allows for easy visualization of results and can be completed without the additional concern of radioactive material use. Now, if you can recall, we have discussed about radio amino assay earlier in uh, radioisotope techniques. And in this regard, the ELISA has almost replaced the radio amino assay because it is uh, as sensitive as RIA or radio amino assay, but the concerns of radioactive hazard are not there in this technique. ELISA is an amino assay uh, in which one reactant is immobilized on a solid phase and the signal generator or reporter is an enzyme. So, here like it says enzyme linked, so enzyme is the signal generator here. And the fundamental principle of ELISA is the use of an enzyme to deliver a signal that a particular antigen antibody reaction has occurred and to what extent this interaction uh, has occurred. So, the, uh, this particular antigen antibody interaction uh, could be in terms of qualitative or quantitative terms it could be evaluated. Now, enzymes are highly specific and their catalytic properties can enhance a non enzymatic reaction manifold. Furthermore, enzyme signals unlike those of say radionucleides in RIA or fluorescent compounds increase with time by continuing to turn over more substrate. So, all ELISA configurations uh, mostly are composed of three components. One is the capture system, the analyte and the detection system. Now, in each the analyte must be the one in limiting amount and both the solid phase capture reagent and the detection system must be present in functional molar axis. Uh, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA, these are plate based assays and designed for detecting and quantifying substances, uh, which could be uh, like peptides, proteins, antibodies, hormones or other uh, analytes as well. And ELISA involves the stepwise addition and reaction of reagents to a solid phase bound substance through incubation and separation of bound and free reagents using washing steps. So, an enzymatic reaction is utilized to yield color and to quantify the reaction through the use of an enzyme label reactant. The most crucial element of the detection strategy is a highly specific antigen antibody interaction. Uh, this one the ELISA was originally first described by Engwall and Perlman, Perlman in 1971 and the method enables analysis of protein samples immobilized in microplate wells using specific antibodies. A number of enzymes have been employed uh, for ELISA uh, as a reporter or signal generators and they include like alkaline phosphatase, horseradish peroxidase, beta galactosidase and so on. And these assays approach the sensitivity of RIAs and have the advantage of being safer and less costly. So, before we move further, let me give you uh, an overview of this technique uh, on your screen. Alright, so like we said, it is a first thing is 
it is based on antigen antibody interaction. So, analyte acts as an antigen and one has to have a specific uh, uh, a, an antibody against that antigen for a particular epitope. So, antigen antibody interaction takes place and there is an enzyme linked to the antibody which could be primary antibody or secondary antibody. And finally, a substrate is added which is converted to product by the linked enzyme and the, uh, the signal is generated which could be uh, seen or it could be quantitated also. So, how it is done is for example, on a surface a solid surface which could be a plate or a, a, a well micro titer well or any other uh, simple uh, thing where uh, there could be different methods of uh, capturing the analyte. Uh, it could be either it could be direct say antigen could be directly placed onto the antigen could be directly placed onto the surface and then antibody interacts with surface. So, and this antibody contains enzyme here. So, what is done? First thing is to immobilize the analyte here. So, we have immobilized this analyte here and then the interaction of antibody with the uh, analyte. This antibody could be having uh, enzyme directly linked to it or there could be other method where that is called indirect ELISA where rather than primary antibody having the enzyme linked in here there could be another antibody which could have enzyme linked to it. So, when you add substrate there will be a color or certain other signal which would be generated and could be counted. Now, there could be another method that rather than immobilizing the antigen uh, directly onto the surface, uh, sometimes it could be uh, not so good actually because of specificity reasons. Uh, there could be another method where what can be done is what can be done is that rather than directly uh, putting antibody there uh, antigen there or analyte there first an antibody could be immobilized onto the surface and then the antigen could be antigen could be put in which specifically interacts with that particular antibody and other substances or other uh, molecules will not interact and they could be washed off. Then afterwards the next antibody with enzyme could be put in here and uh, this is like uh, kind of where uh, an, uh, the analyte is uh, not directly being immobilized, but it is immobilized through an antibody which is directly immobilized onto the surface and then another antibody uh, for uh, is comes in the picture with enzyme linked to it. Now, when you add substrate, when you add substrate to it, then substrate will be converted to product and product gives a particular color and so that could be quantitated or it could be measured in, uh, in like just for qualitative purpose and will give you uh, the uh, idea about that particular analyte uh, in both qualitatively or quantitatively. So, this is a very basic uh, phenomenon uh, of uh, uh, ELISA or enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. So, there are two uh, different types of ELISA uh, methods, one is traditional and other are new ELISA methods. Now, traditional ELISA typically involves chromogenic reporters and substrates that produce some kind of observable color change to indicate the presence of the antigen or we can call it analyte. So, these are simple uh, or you can say traditional ELISA method, uh, whereas in contrast to traditional ELISA methods, newer ELISA like techniques utilize fluorogenic, electro luminescent or real time PCR reporters to uh, create quantifiable signals. 
Now, these new reporters can have various advantages including higher sensitivities and uh, multiplexing, uh, but since uh, like in technical terms if you say the newer assays or newer techniques here uh, are not strictly uh, ELISA techniques, because as ELISA says it is an enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. Uh, these are not really enzyme linked, but they employ other methods for uh, signal generation and quantification uh, and they are um, attached to or linked to non enzymatic reporters here. But however, this uh, general principle you can say is almost similar or uh, and so they are grouped in you can say larger category or as ELISA techniques. So, traditional ELISA is simple enzyme linked, but other newer techniques uh, also utilizes other uh, non enzymatic reporters. Now, there could be many variants of ELISA technique uh, have been developed and used in different situations, but most of the techniques depend on the same basic elements. So, the basic procedure as such is, uh, is very much similar in all different kinds of uh, techniques. So, first thing to be done is the coating or capture actually. Like I showed uh, you uh, just before, uh, first thing is to uh, put the antigen or the analyte on the solid surface. Now, these are it could be a plate like I said it could be micro plate, wells or a certain other surface. Now, coating can be done or capture can be uh, atta um, uh, can be achieved either directly or indirectly. So, either you can directly immobilize the analyte or antigen onto the surface and the surface could be like I told you it could be polystyrene micro plate wells or lot of other surfaces could be there or it could be indirect immobilization of antigen can also be performed. Then once you have coated or you have put in your material uh, analyte there, then plate blocking is the next step in most of the techniques. What is plate blocking here? Plate blocking is the addition of irrelevant like uh, protein uh, or other molecule to cover all unsaturated surface binding sites of the microplate wells. So, many times like casein or other uh, certain other proteins BSA or some other protein could be utilized or other molecules could also be utilized uh, to cover up all unsaturated surface binding sites uh, for non-specific signal or otherwise and this is done or this is called as plate blocking. So, that is the next second step in uh, ELISA procedure. Third one is the probing or detection. Now, here it is incubation with antigen specific antibodies that affinity bind to the antigens. So, uh, when antigen is immobilized plate blocking has been done then it will be incubated or the antigen specific antibodies will be added to the plate and they will bind uh, because of higher affinity to the antigens and then finally, signal measurement or generation is done, where a detection of the signal generated by a direct or secondary tag on the specific antibody. So, it is the enzyme which is linked on there and when you add substrate uh, a colored product is formed that is the signal generation. Now, very basic techniques in a typical assay uh, designed to detect an antigen in a complex protein mixture, the antigen is immobilized either by, by direct adsorption or via an antibody adsorbed to the wells of the microplate. So, either you can directly put in antigen on the surface or you can one can also put antibodies for that particular antigen and then uh, that is indirect adsorption can also be performed. Now, the plate is blocked like I said and the antigen is probed with a specific detection antibody. The detection antibody may be directly labeled that is with a signal generating enzyme or a fluorophore or it may be a secondary probe with an enzyme or fluoro labeled secondary antibody that is antibody for primary 
uh, against the primary antibody. So, for enzymatic detection, the appropriate enzyme substrate is added. So, we will be, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, these different forms of ELISA techniques uh, as we go along. So, uh, as uh, enzyme detection, uh, enzymatic detection, uh, the appropriate substrate for that particular enzyme is added and then signal will be observed which is proportional to the amount of antigen in the sample. Now, washing between steps ensures that only specific or high affinity binding events are maintained to cause signal at the final step. So, that uh, specificity is maintained here. Now, very simple way like I have shown you this also figure here shows uh, uh, this very simple method of ELISA. Uh, now, here these antibodies are immobilized on a surface or this, this is a capture antibody you can call and this is a, a, a well of a plate, a micro plate. Then your sample that is antigen is added and since, since these antibodies are against the antigen, they will bind to these antibodies. The non-specific binding will be very much less uh, and then also uh, plate blocking will be done. Then add detection antibodies that is the antibodies where either enzyme or other reporter is attached and then finally, substrate is added and color development takes place here. Uh, this is the plate and then it could be directly uh, read in a spec on a spectrophotometer which can accommodate these plates here. So, that is how the uh, simple technique or basic technique of ELISA works. Now, there are lot of variations of ELISA methods actually. Uh, there are number of variations uh, which have been developed allowing qualitative de detection or quantitative measurement of either antigen or antibody. Now, each type of ELISA can be used qualitatively to detect the presence of antibody or antigen. Alternatively, a standard curve based on known concentration of antibody or antigen is prepared and uh, they uh, form the basis for determining the concentration of the unknown sample. If you could recall uh, in radio immunoassay also a particular uh, curve was uh, drawn uh, through the standards and then unknown could be uh, no unknown concentration could be calculated uh, or determined through this standard curve we said there are a lot of variations here. Let us discuss those uh, different types of, or different forms of ELISA technique. Uh, one ELISA technique is indirect ELISA. Now, indirect ELISA here antibody can be detected or quantitatively determined with this particular technique. So, serum or some other sample containing primary antibody is added to an antigen coated micro titer well and allowed to react with the antigen attached to the well. Uh, now, after so here uh, like you have antigen already attached to the well and there is an antibody which interacts with these antigen. Now, after any free antibody that is primary antibody we call or antibody 1, uh, it is washed away and the presence of antibody bound to the antigen is detected by adding an enzyme conjugated secondary anti isotype antibody, which binds to the primary antibody. So, this could also be called as double antibody system. Now, any free antibody that is secondary antibody then is washed away. After that, a substrate for uh, specific for the enzyme is added. Now, the amount of color reaction products that forms is measured by specialized spectrophotometric plate readers, which can measure the absorbance of all of the wells of a 96 well plate in seconds actually. They could do it very fast and whole plate could be done. Uh, the enzyme acts as an amplifier, even if only few enzyme linked antibodies remain bound the enzyme molecules will produce many signal molecules. So, within common sense limitation, the enzyme can go on producing color indefinitely uh, 
uh, but the more primary antibody is present in the donor uh, serum, the more secondary antibody uh, uh, and therefore, more enzyme will bind and the faster color will develop. So, there is a method a uh, procedure to, uh, to evaluate all this to measure the color development and quantitative information can be derived. Uh, it is not that uh, it is indefinitely done in here. Uh, the indirect ELISA a major disadvantage of this particular uh, indirect ELISA is that the method uh, of antigen immobilization is non-specific because you are directly immobilizing the antigen. Uh, when serum is used as the source of test ant antigen, all proteins in the sample may stick to the micro titer plate well. So, a small concentration of analyte in serum has to compete with other serum proteins when binding to the well surface. So, this might be a problem because uh, if there is a, a sample, it is not a pure antigen, uh, then a lot of other things might also uh, bind non uh, bind to the well. Uh, this problem is uh, quite uh, well settled in sandwich ELISA uh, or it is called uh, which provides a solution to this problem actually by using a capture antibody uh, specific for the test antigen to pull it out of the serum's molecular mixture. Now, indirect ELISA is a method of choice to detect the presence of serum antibodies against human uh, immunodeficiency virus uh, causative agents of AIDS. Uh, in this assay, recombinant envelope uh, and core proteins of HIV are adsorbed and solid phase antigens to micro titer wells. Uh, as, so, as solid phase antigens to micro titer wells. Individual infected with HIV will produce serum antibodies to epitopes on the viral proteins. Now, generally serum antibodies to HIV can be detected by indirect ELISA within 6 weeks of infection. So, this could be a very good technique. So, if you can see on your screen in indirect ELISA, first thing is antigen is coated. Like I said, antigen might be in very small quantities in the whole of the sample. If that is so, then other proteins will also be coated in here. Now, once antigen is coated in here, then specific antibodies are added and then specific antibody, uh, uh, extra antibody will be washed off by uh, washing. Then secondary antibody, which is this one is added, which is uh, enzyme conjugated, then substrated, uh, substrate is added and color production takes place or signal generation takes place which could be measured. So, this is indirect ELISA like we were discussing uh, the problem of non-specificity or other proteins binding could be solved by sandwich ELISA. Now, in sandwich ELISA plate is coated with capture antibody and sample is added uh, to it and any antigen present will bind to the capture antibody. So, other things could be washed off, they will not bind. Uh, of course, uh, plate needs to be blocked, uh, so that nothing else binds in there. Uh, th then afterwards detection antibody is added and it binds to the antigen. Enzyme linked secondary antibody is added and binds to the detecting antibody. So, it could be like detecting antibody could be directly attached to the uh, secondary one uh, to the enzyme or there could be a secondary uh, antibody with enzyme linked. Then substrate is added and converted by enzyme to the detectable form. Let me explain the sandwich ELISA on your screen here. In sandwich ELISA, what is done is first thing is in micro titer wells or other surfaces, the first thing is to put in antibody actually now these antibodies uh, the first thing is that antibodies will bind to the antigen the next step 
the antibodies will be binding to the antigen and then uh, secondary antibody which is enzyme linked will be bound at here. Now, this antibody may contain enzyme or maybe another secondary antibody could be utilized, but most of the time this detection antibody contains enzyme linked in here. Afterwards, substrate will be added and substrate will be converted to product and color development is takes place. So, it is called a sandwich ELISA because this particular one is sandwiched this antigen or analyte is sandwiched between the two antibodies. So, this is called sandwich ELISA. Sandwich ELISA uh, this the problem of uh, like uh, small amount of ant antigen being directly coated on to the uh, surface. Uh, the problem where other uh, molecules might also bind uh, and uh, for binding surface this small amount has to compete that problem could be uh, solved here because there is a capture antibody which is specific for that antigen. Now, there is another form of ELISA technique that is competitive ELISA. The competitive ELISA unlabeled antibody is incubated in presence of its antigen. So, first thing is done is that there is unlabeled antibody uh, in free solution it is incubated in presence of its antigen. Now, this bound antigen antibody complex uh, are then added to the antigen coated to well. So, uh, first thing what is done that antigen antibody complex is made which is outside the well, then it is added uh, to the antigen coated well. The plate is washed and unbound antibody is removed. Now, secondary antibody specific to the primary antibody is added and the second antibody is coupled or conjugated to the enzyme, substrate is added and remaining enzyme will elicit a chromogenic or fluorescent signal. So, for competitive ELISA higher the original concentration of antigen the weaker the eventual signal actually. So, depending on that uh, it, since it is called competitive because there is a competition in here uh, if you can see on our screen. So, first thing is incubate antibody with antigen to be measured. So, there will be like binding here of uh, antigen and antibody complex formation. There is a uh, antigen which is coated uh, in the well and this complex is added to that well. Then interaction will take place where uh, it is not shown here clearly. Uh, so, where this uh, there will be a competition between the uh, well coated uh, antigen and uh, the one which is bound and there will be some antibodies which will be binding to this depending on the concentration. And uh, then enzyme conjugated antibodies against the primary antibodies are uh, put in and then finally, substrate is added and product formation takes place. So, like I said depending on in competitive ELISA if higher is the original concentration of antigen then the binding to the well coated antigen will be less and eventually the signal will be weaker and vice versa. So, this is how uh, the competitive ELISA uh, works. Now, in this figure all three techniques or different forms of ELISA are summarized in here and as we can see that if you can see first is indirect ELISA. In indirect ELISA what we have discussed this uh, the steps here the, an the, the antigen is coated here on the surface of the well. The first antibody is added which will bind to the coated antigen. Uh, which is specific antibody uh, and needs to be measured. Then there will be addition uh, in the next step you will wash off any primary antibody which is not bound. Then there will be addition of the enzyme conjugated secondary antibody and finally, the uh, substrate addition and color development which will be measured through spectrophotometer or other methods. Uh, so, in indirect ELISA this is a very uh, straightforward method In sandwich ELISA rather than coating antigen directly what is done first a capture antibody is coated on the well uh, 
and then antigen is added rather than coating the antigen directly. Then afterwards a secondary antibody which is enzyme conjugated antibody is added and then uh, finally, uh, substrate is added and uh, color development takes place and color will depend on that how many enzyme molecules are there. So, uh, in between uh, like at every step washing has to be done to remove uh, the non binders here like say primary antibody or antigen is not bound which has to be washed off in this case and this secondary antibody which is not bound to needs to be washed off. So, that extra signal is not there signal comes from only uh, the antibodies or enzyme uh, which is linked to the antibody which is bound to the antigen here. And then there is competitive ELISA where first antigen antibody uh, interacts outside and forms the complex then find then they are added to the antigen coated well uh, and then there will be a competition and there will be uh, the antibodies will be washed off and finally, you will see the signal and depending on uh, whether what is the concentration in here and what is the concentration known concentration you can determine the uh, you can uh, uh, quantitate and in terms of qualitative terms you can evaluate uh, or measure the uh, the signal and finally, the antigen uh, concentrations. So, this is uh, three forms of ELISA techniques. Now, there are a lot of applications like I said this is a very popular method uh, popular analytical method uh, in biochemistry or in wet labs and it is also has applications is lot of like clinical diagnostics um, it is quite popular and it is replaced RIA because of the hazards of the uh, radioactivity. So, the because the ELISA can be performed to evaluate either the presence of antigen or the presence of antibody in a sample it is a very useful tool for many different applications. Uh, like for example, determining serum antibody concentrations like such as with HIV test or West Nile virus test uh, one can determine the antibody serum antibody concentrations. Uh, it has also found applications in the food industry uh, where uh, in detecting say food potential food allergens uh, uh, like uh, in peanuts or walnuts or almonds, milk, eggs, etcetera. So, it has lot of application in food industry as well. Uh, food pathogens can also be detected here. ELISA can also be used in toxico uh, toxicological as a rapid presumptive screen for certain classes of drugs. Uh, it can be used for that. Uh, like, uh, there have been like ELISA test have been done to detect various kinds of diseases uh, like for example, malaria or Chagas disease or other diseases have been uh, uh, detected uh, using ELISA technique. ELISA tests also are used as in uh, say in vitro diagnostics in medical laboratories. And there are a lot of other uses of ELISA uh, which includes like say detection of mycobacterium antibodies in tuberculosis, detection of say rotavirus in feces, detection of say hepatitis B uh, markers in the serum uh, and enterotoxins uh, of E. coli in uh, feces. Uh, likewise, there are whole lot of uh, detections, um, uh, whole lot of applications of this particular method. Now, there are uh, like ELISA is a very popular technique and very uh, sensitive technique. It has lot of advantages and some disadvantages also. Uh, in advantages of ELISA, these reagents are relatively cheap and have a long li shelf life. Um, ELISA is a highly specific and sensitive technique as enzymes are highly specific in nature. Uh, there is no radiation hazards like uh, radiation hazards in radio immuno assay uh, where uh, radioactive uh, substances are used. Uh, the ELISA is very easy to perform and uh, it has a quick procedure it could be done uh, very fast. Um, the equipment for ELISA is almost inexpensive and it is widely available. Uh, ELISA can be used uh, particularly in uh, clinical terms for uh, detection of variety of infections uh, 
uh, and lot of toxicological studies of foodborne pathogens or other uh, uh, like diseases, pathogens, viruses, all these things could be easily detected if you have the uh, specific antibodies for those antigens. Uh, with lot of these advantages, there are some disadvantages as well. Uh, like measurement of enzyme activi activity can be more complex than the measurement of activity of some types of radioisotopes. Uh, this could be one uh, disadvantage, but not all the time. Uh, enzyme activity may be affected by plasma constituents. So, these are like uh, nitty gritties which needs to be standardized uh, when uh, one has to do uh, uh, ELISA for particular technique. Like for example, uh, plasma may contain certain things which might be inhibiting the enzyme or which might lower down the activity of the enzyme and uh, proper quantitation cannot be performed. Uh, there are kits available commercially, but they are not cheap. Uh, so, uh, when one needs to do with regular chemicals and other things uh, like generating antibodies, uh, one has to standardize the techniques and then only can be followed subsequently. So, these are uh, different technique, uh, different advantages and disadvantages of ELISA. So, uh, this completes the, uh, this particular section here. Uh, to summarize, ELISA is uh, one of the most popular techniques and has replaced RIA or radio amino assay to a large extent. It is a wet lab. Uh, you can say analytical uh, biochemistry technique and quite has applications in clinical uh, diagnostics uh, and uh, other various areas. Uh, it is a very simple technique and we have discussed about uh, it, uh, different forms of ELISA, where we have discussed about uh, indirect ELISA, sandwich ELISA and competitive ELISA. Uh, there are other forms which we have not really discussed in where uh, uh, other than enzymes, reporters are other than enzymes or other uh, chromosomic substrates like real time PCRs or other methods, uh, which are not truly in a sense ELISA techniques, but since their uh, general principle is same. Uh, general procedure of ELISA is uh, four step procedure, where one is the coating of the antigen directly or indirectly, that is adsorption of the antigen or analyte. Second is uh, blocking the plate, uh, so that uh, anything else does not bind. Uh, third thing is uh, adding the antibodies which are conjugated to enzyme and fourth step is signal generation by adding substrate which is converted to product. So, uh, this was about all about the uh, technique of ELISA which is very important, which has lot of applications in areas of biotechnology and it could be both qualitative as well as quantitative. So, with this lecture, we have completed this section and also the course on analytical technologies in biotechnology. Now, in this course, we have gone through uh, various techniques, which are widely used in uh, and utilized by uh, different uh, branches. Uh, in various areas of biotechnology. Uh, we have started with uh, this course with the microscopy technique. Uh, then we moved on to radioisotope technique, chromatography separations, uh, electrophoresis technique, then centrifugation technique and spectroscopy. And finally, in this section we have discussed last section uh, PCR polymerase chain reaction, uh, DNA sequencing methods and ELISA. If you could recall, uh, we will just summarize all these uh, uh, sections, which we have uh, discussed. In microscopy, we have gone through uh, different various techniques of light microscopy and electron microscopy. In uh, light microscopy, we have uh, uh, discussed about uh, various uh, methods of generation of contrast through uh, say phase contrast microscopy or fluorescence microscopy or say polarization microscopy uh, and uh, uh, like say dark field microscopy likewise. 
in electron microscopy we have discussed about uh, uh, scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope. Then in radioisotope technique we have discussed about all three techniques based on ionization uh, that is GM counters based on scintillations uh, that is scintillation counters and autoradiography. Uh, then in chromatography separations we have dealt ab about say different kinds of chromatographic methods used widely like ion exchange chromatography, gel filtration chromatography, affinity chromatography and uh, gas liquid chromatography. And we have also dealt in all these sections about basic concepts actually in the beginning uh, to make understand this these techniques, the basic uh, principle of these techniques uh, for uh, uh, to understand. Then uh, from chromatographic techniques we have moved on to electrophoresis techniques where we have discussed about the basic concepts and also uh, agarose agarose gel and polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and we moved on to the techniques like SDS page, uh, isoelectric focusing, uh, then we have discussed about pulsed field gel electrophoresis and uh, sequencing gels etcetera. Likewise, in centrifugation methods, we have discussed about uh, basic concepts and various centrifugation methods like types of uh, like uh, preparative and analytical methods. We also discussed about types of centrifuges, types of rotors, ultra centrifuges etcetera and uh, 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 various types of rotors and care of rotors we have discussed about. In uh, spectroscopy techniques, we have discussed about various basic concepts and that is the interaction of matter with the radiations. Uh, and then we have discussed about UV vis fluorescence, uh, NMR, X-ray crystallography uh, and then finally mass spectrometry techniques. And in this section, that is last section, we have discussed about the PCR, polymerase chain reaction, DNA sequencing method and ELISA that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. I, I hope that uh, this course on analytical technologies in biotechnology will certainly be help to you uh, to all students who will go through this and uh, uh, will help in uh, understanding the basic concepts as well as understanding the certain techniques which are based on these uh, concepts and will help in uh, improving and understanding uh, these techniques for application or for uh, applying in your uh, daily like research uh, routines and also uh, in certain applications. Thank you.